Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novage webinar, Discover IntelliCAD 2022, Program Structure and Personalization. Today you will learn the basic principle to make the best use of Intersoft IntelliCAD 2022. This presentation will showcase the program window structure and give you fundamental information about layers. Learn how to use command line, change background color, and set auto save time. Restore the default program settings and support drawing formats. Option for practical document repair and cleaning function will conclude the session. Today with us, Richard Zins is uh, Richard is the head of international department in Arcadia Soft. And um, let me tell you about Novet and where you can find IntelliCAD 2022. Novedge is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, faster services, and no headaches. Check us out at novedge.com. And this is the product page where you can just add to cart your discounted IntelliCAD. So check us out and don't miss this deal. And now without further ado, I will share Rich's screen so he can get started with the presentation. Take it away, Richard. Just a couple of seconds. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the webinar on Intersoft and Telecad 2022. We're doing this webinar for Nova Edge. And what I would like to ask you to do is when you have questions, to please type them in below and we will answer them directly there. This will make it a lot easier as we have a lot of people tuning in from various time zones, which is, makes it difficult to coordinate. So this will make it better and easier for everybody. All right. Today we will deal with the program interface and the description of the most important dialog window options. I'll begin with the start page that appears when starting the program. In the center, there are the recently used documents. If you are using the program for the first time, the prepared samples will appear here and you can access them at any time later. And you will find them in the program start menu. On the left side, there's the option to open a new drawing, a blank and empty one. Then open files is for opening any WG document on your computer. If you do not want Intersoft and Telecad to open with the start page, but rather to open a new project right away, then on the bottom left, you have the option to skip the start page next time. When you tick it, the new file will be opening each time you start the program. Intersoft and Telecad can be used to create 2D and 3D documentation. As you can see here, you can create drawings from simple 2D or 3D elements. You also have the option to show such elements in a rendering with lighting or simply with hidden mesh elements, depending on what you will need for your project. Let's start with what the program consists of. The entire screen is divided into different parts. First off, the most important part, the one that takes up the most space, is the work screen. It can be with the black background or with another color. I will show you how to change the background color in a moment. There are ribbons at the top of the screen that by default have all the necessary program options. They're divided into basic drawing functions, editing functions, and dimensioning functions. The first ribbon contains a collection of the most important options, essentially taken from every ribbon. These are the most frequently used options, so you can use it, but if, for example, if you need to dimension a drawing, instead of using these few elements from the dimension tab here, you can go to the Annote ribbon and select more precise tools from there. One of the options is to work with the program choosing commands from the tool ribbons. You also have the option of using the toolbars, which are located by default here on the left and on the right side. Right now, these toolbars duplicate for you the options that are on the ribbons. I'm going to turn them off now. Move them to the middle and turn off the ones I won't be using. I will leave some of the toolbars, for example, the options for zooming, for showing the entire drawing or options for refreshing the drawing. 
Options such as manual redraw are options that I find very useful, so I always like to have them close at hand. Additionally, you can always turn on or off such a toolbar or ribbon. If you have a white screen, you don't need to use ribbons as they take up a lot of space. And if you have a white screen, you can take you can have a situation where most of the icons on the ribbons will only take half the ribbon. In such a case, I suggest using tools such as tool palettes. You do not have all the options here, but it does not matter because under the right button, you can easily create your own palettes and add to them the commands you need. I'll show you this when discussing the more advanced options of the program. In the program, there are also the smart top 10 options. It is an option similarly to the start option where you have the things you use most often, except that this ribbon was created by the manufacturer. And when you draw something, you actually use some of these things, but some may not interest you because everyone uses the program differently and uses different drawing options. That's why the smart top 10 is a window that learns along with your drawing, which means that you're going to be inputting lines. It's going to remember the options that you use after each other, which means that if you draw another line after you have drawn a line, then a circle, then dimension something, then add another line, these options will be remembered. And the ones you use most often after giving commands will be made available here so that you won't search for them through the ribbons. So the smart 10, smart top 10, is the list of options that you use most often, not those that are provided by the manufacturer. Therefore, the smart top 10 will learn along with your project. In addition to these smart top 10 options and ribbons, you also have the option of using the command bars that have already turned off. But if there was such need, you can minimize the ribbons. So you click here with the right button and you have the option of minimizing the ribbons. And with this option, click and pull out the ribbons you need to work with. You can also turn off the ribbons and go back to the classic view where you only have and use ribbons. You can also turn off the ribbons and toolbars and all the additional drawing options because you can just as well use only the command area. The command area is at the bottom here and it allows you to type commands, which means type whatever is under the icon, either a shortcut or aliases. How you can create your own shortcuts and aliases will be discussed later during the presentation of the advanced options of the program. And now I will discuss how to turn these elements on and off, because sometimes you turn off the tool palette and you want to turn it on, or you accidentally turn off the command bar and you want to turn it back on. Now I clicked on the status bar. This is the bar at the bottom. This is also a very important bar that will allow you to turn on and off certain options. For example, if you open a new drawing, it has the grid turned on by default. If you do not use it, just turn off this grid or turn off orthogonal drawings and the drawing of horizontal or vertical in relation to the screen. You can also turn it on on this status bar. The attraction of snap points, characteristic points, in other words, the end of the line, the center and the intersection of elements can also be turned on and off right here on this status bar. Also switching between documents as you can have any number of files open in the program. And by default, you switch on the tabs of these files by simply clicking on them. But if you turned off these tabs to increase the drawing area, here at the bottom of the screen on the status bar, you have the option to turn them on and switch between these windows. So here, the program adjusts itself to how you will want to introduce elements. And as I mentioned before, if you turn something off by accident, you can always return to it on the view ribbon. So, for example, you can turn the tool palettes on and off here. It is the same with the smart top 10 or the command bar, which you can also turn on and off as you need. At the top of the screen, you also have the quick access toolbar. It is used, for example, to switch between layers. Layers are such elements on which you will sort parts of your drawing that are drawn in the same way. So, for example, axis, on one layer, dimensioning on another layer, descriptions also on another layer. 
It means particular elements are defined on transparent tracing paper, and this is where you can switch between them in this part. Of course, you also have options to save, open documents, go back in the drawing if you did something wrong, and opening a new drawing. Here, this Intersoft IntelliCAD icon, among other things, allows you to open documents. Here you can also see available formats. We mainly work with DWG files, also the popular DXF format, but here there's a whole list of files opened and used by the program. When it comes to the DWG file formats, you have the option to open and save files from version 2.5 to the latest version, 2018. If you are working with someone who has an, any older version, it is better to save in this older version so that later someone does not have to look for the program in which he will have to convert the project. Now let's move on to the topic of drawing. I mentioned that you can select elements from the ribbon, the toolbar and the command area. I will choose ribbons and now by default when you have the dynamic data input window turned on, after turning on the option, I turned on drawing lines. I have the additional option next to the cursor. Now the program is asking me to indicate the starting point. Exactly the same is shown here at the bottom in the command area. So you have the same commands at the cursor and in the command area. If you have worked before without this window at the cursor and you do not need it because it simply disrupts your work, then this is where you can turn it off at the bottom of the status bar. So I'm starting to draw. Various options are available for the drawing and can enter data between the windows that are shown up here on the screen. So now the length is 441 and the angle is 46. You can move by using tab. If I enter, for example, the length of 100 units, I'll switch with the tab key and enter, for example, 45 degrees and confirm it. As you can see, I have entered the length of 100 units at the angle of 45 degrees, but you can also enter it with coordinates. For example, 200 units in X and zero after the decimal point in Y, which are coordinates or polar lengths. You can define them here. In addition to entering data from the keyboard, you also have access here at the window. There is an arrow here. Unfortunately, I cannot show it on the cursor because when I move the cursor, the entire window moves. But right after the endpoint, you have such an arrow. If you click the arrow on the keyboard, please notice you have sub options available like angle, length, follow, close and undo. Also, please note that you have exactly the same options right here at the bottom of the screen in the command area and you have them highlighted too. Here, options have capital letters at the beginning. Whatever letter is in capital and in blue, it will mean that you can call up this option with the letter. You don't have to enter it as a capital letter, but this letter is chosen to enable the needed option when you use the drawing option from the command area. If I use the window here, I can choose the option with either the cursor or the arrow. For example, if you want to choose an angle, and use the input option in the command area, then I just type the letter A. Confirm with enter. Look now, the program asks me to enter the angle of the line. I type the angle 45 and confirm with enter. Now the program asks me for a length. I type 100 units and confirm it with enter. And now if I want to select the same here under the arrow, all I have to do is select the length, for example, move with the arrow, confirm with enter, the length for example 200, enter, angle 0, it will go to the right. And that way you can enter elements. Both this window here at the cursor and the command bar help you to communicate with the program. The program shows us what, is, what it expects from us at a given moment, whether to indicate a point or select an element to draw. By default, when you have dynamic input window enabled, Whatever you type will be next to the cursor. If you disable this window, it will all automatically go to the command line. For example, I start typing a line. The command alias for line is the letter L. Please know that when I typed it in, the program shows me this option, but if I keep typing, I can enter the full word. Not always the first letter is used to execute the command. 
For example, under the letter P, there is not a polyline, but real-time pan, that is, moving view of the drawing. So depending on what you choose, the longer part of the command might be needed. The fewer options to choose from. I will show you now how to call up a command in different languages. This is for non-English versions. Here, on the English version, I type in dist. In other languages, in other versions, it would be in that language. The English commands work on all the versions with the underscore symbol in the front. So use that to type in underscore dist to activate this command. So I have presented ribbons, toolbars, just a reminder that you can always have one ribbon and all the options you need on it, but I'll speak about it in a bit more detail a little later on. I will show you how you can modify these ribbons and create your own. Quite an important part of the program are the settings. You can get to these from the command line by clicking on the white background with the right mouse button and bringing up the program settings option. You can reach the same window from the tools ribbon. It is the same window options. When drawing, however, I think the easiest way to get there is through the command line. Here on the first tab, General, we have a very important window. How often the autosave takes place. This is very important, so please do not disable this option under any circumstances, but also do not go down below 10 minutes. You can draw a lot in 10 minutes, so you do not need, want to lose all your work. On the other hand, if you have a larger file and you set the autosave for every minute, then you will get the impression that the program is constantly saving and you cannot work. My advice is do not go under 10 minutes. By default, autosave files have the SV$ extension to make them easier to find right here in this directory. And where is this directory? The easiest way to track them here is on the ribbon. On the Paths Files tab, the first one from the top is Auto Backup. If you select this path here and double click a dialog box will open, in which this folder will be located and your files will be there with the SV$ extension. The file will be named as you named it. If you haven't managed to name it yet, look, even I don't have it named yet because I didn't save it yet. It will be saving every 15 minutes under the name that the program has here by default. All you have to do is pull the file out of this folder, rename it to whatever name you want, change the extension to DWG, and then you can open it normally. So remember, if anything happens, the battery on your laptop dies, the power goes out, the program shuts down, whatever happens, first you open the program, then the program settings window. Find your automatic file saving, find the file, change the name and the extension to DWG, and open the file. This is for 90% of the latest versions of the file. Unless someone has the habit to save after using any option, then indeed this version will be the latest. So in most cases, this autosave is your latest version of the project. On the display ribbon, as I mentioned earlier, you can adjust the color scheme. Here is an option where you can choose a background in any color. For many people, the black background is the best for working because there is such an impression that your eyesight does not tire as much. Just please remember that this white color for the lines is actually black on the printout. It is only modified here automatically for the drawing, so do not choose a light gray, only white. It will undoubtedly be suitable for printing then. Obviously, you can choose any other color, then the color that will be used for the drawing elements will actually be printed the way that you set them, with this one exception. White will always be printed as black. Other elements, for example, the color of the selection area or handles, the colors of such elements can also be changed here. You can change the paper space, model space, the background. So this is a color modification window. Here is the mouse options button. For those who start using the program, this could be quite important. For example, if you have nothing selected at the beginning, you can choose this option, repeat last command, for the right click action. This is a very good option when you start your work. You draw, for example, a line. You finish drawing the line with the right mouse button, then you start drawing the line again. 
but in a different place. So again, the right mouse button has the option on. You show where you start and continue drawing. At the beginning of work, I always suggest to activate the repeat last command under the right mouse button. Now, if you have an element selected, I definitely recommend the show shortcut menu, which means the context menu, because you have all the options, or at least most of the modification options listed. The icons at the beginning may not tell you everything, so it will be good that next to these icons, you have a description. It will be easier for you to find what you need. On the snapping tab, you have other important information, such as the colors and the snap markers. I will discuss the snap points in detail when discussing drawing. These are such characteristic elements, such as points or intersections of circle lines that the program finds for us automatically. But here you also have a snap cursor. This is the one with which you select elements. This is a crosshair by default, the size of 10 units may be too small for some. So here, if necessary, you can enlarge this crosshair so that this area for making is a bit larger. All of this is to make it easier for you to work, of course. The last tab in this window is uh, selection cycling. Sometimes it happens that either part or the whole element, even two or more, overlap one another. Then by default, if you click on such a group, you will see a window in which all elements will be listed. There will be information on what layer they are placed and what elements are there. If you do not want such a box, then you deselect this box of the cycle selection. Then, after selecting the overlapping elements, the program indicates to you only the elements that was drawn most recently, or the one that was selected from the display order option as the one to be on top. With the right mouse button, after selecting what I mentioned before, you have modification options, and it will be very useful because you have all the options listed, including the description of what this option is. They're just not icons. Sometimes it happens that when you're working on a document or you have opened a document created by somebody else and the program behaves a bit differently, it turns out that by accident, with some keyboard shortcuts, you change the options of some system variable and you can no longer select elements the way you want. So let's say, let's stay on the system variable for a moment and what they are for. Let me show you an example of a system variable. Suppose you want to select something. Of course, you can select by clicking a line or a particular element, but if you have more of such elements that you want to select, then of course you will not click on all of them individually, but you will do it with the area. You can do this by holding the left mouse button, select all elements, let's select them from right to left. As you have noticed, absolutely all elements are selected, even those ones that were just partially in the area of this field. Now, if you do the same operation by holding the left mouse button pressed and select from left to right, you will immediately see the color difference and only those elements that are entirely in this area will be selected. But it still may not be enough to make your work easier. When you zoom in and out, move the drawing, holding the left mouse button is a bit inconvenient because very often it happens that accidentally clicking something, trying to move the drawing, you simply go beyond this required area and stop holding the left mouse button. That's why I always change the program setting with the pick drag variable, where after selecting it, I just turn it off. I enter the value zero, approve, and now I click, no longer holding the left mouse button. I can zoom in and move the drawing. This will prevent me from accidentally turning off the selection. This is one such variable which will cause the program to work differently. Another example of a variable is, for example, when I select one element, then a second and a third one, and they add up to this set of selected elements. However, in this case, I can turn on a variable that, after selecting the second element, will cause the first element to be unmarked. It will all depend on what you need to do in the program. The program variables are located under the F1 key. All variables will also be listed and described in the help for the program, so I recommend that you browse through them to make your work easier. 
Sometimes it may happen that the program will behave strangely because of such a program variable. Either you got it in a file because some variables are saved in the file and some in the registry. And if they are saved in the registry, the variable will apply to all documents. So if you do not want them, you can simply restart program settings. Or reset, I should say, probably. What is important is that first you have to close the program. After closing the program, go to the Windows menu, search for Intersoft IntelliCAD and select the option Restore Default Settings. After restoring the default settings, the program will work like it was launched for the first time, so all program variables you set will disappear. All default ribbons and toolbars will return to as if they were launched for the first time. This will remove any program variables that might have been overwritten, those that you would not like to have changed anymore. Let me just remind you that if you use this option of restarting the program settings, the program must first be closed. Another quite important part of the program is the properties window, and it's located on the view ribbon. And here, in this part, is where you turn on and off most elements, the command bars, the command area. You can turn on the properties, and they probably can be turned on by default, on the left side. Some people work with this window always on, if they have enough space. You can always right-click on this bar here, and dock them on the left or right side. It will look like a bar will appear when you hover over it, and the window will pop up. What do you need this for? First of all, when you have absolutely nothing chosen, check here in the command area. Here it says command, which means the program is waiting for you to see what it, you will do next. Then you have, among other things, the most important variables to set. What I showed you before, a variable that helps you select elements while holding down the left mouse button or by a double click. The variables are listed here. You can change them by selecting a different value in the properties. However, when you select an element, you will see the properties of that element on what layer this element is located. What is the scale? What is the line type? And other parameters. Here there is not much information given, mostly everything is by layer. But I prefer to define all parameters for a layer, not for a particular element, just because it's easier to modify anything later. It's not like you just draw and don't modify anything afterwards. It's very common that you will later change line weights and line types, for example. If you do this for a layer and not for an individual element, it's much easier to manage. It also helps to keep the document in order. By default, when drawing, all lines have the same thickness. Here at the bottom of the screen, in the status bar, you can turn these thicknesses on and off. I will turn it on now and change it for one line. For example, I will change the line type to a dashed line and change the thickness of this line so that it will be more visible. Note that all elements were on the layer 0 because I didn't modify anything here. Where do you handle the layers? On the home ribbon, you have Explore Layers. When you open it, you have access to the layers. There is always layer 0. You can't delete it or modify it. This layer will always be there. However, you can add your own layers. Sometimes there's also a def point. This is a layer, which is, uh, and it is disabled by default from printing. This is a layer where the dimension points are. So remember that this layer shouldn't be removed either. Now we want to change the weight of these lines on layer zero. I choose the thick line option, and please note that they are all changed, except the one line that was modified earlier. If you had several such modification lines, you may not remember and not notice it. And it will come out only later in the documentation that something is incorrectly done. Therefore, we advise to assign such changes to layers. Here we have another sample project where I have elements laid out in layers. So, for example, I have descriptions on different layers. Dimensions are also on different layers. You can create layers by using this icon on top in the left corner. 
You can assign any name, change colors by clicking on the white rectangle by default, but you can choose any. By default, you have a small selection of lines, but note that here in the window at the bottom, you have the option load, and you can choose from several dozen options. Additionally, here through the browse option, there is at least one such directory in the program. This is a directory with a LIN extension, but you can also download them from other CAD programs. Whether these layers will be visible or invisible is up to you. Note that some auxiliary things are hidden here. You can also lock elements so that they do not accidentally delete something. For example, I click on dimension, trying to delete them and nothing happens. Such blocking is very often useful if you want to protect certain elements. It prevents them from being accidentally modified or deleted. If you would like an element not to always be visible and not to be edited, then you can freeze the layer. Then you will neither see it nor be able to select it. In the next column, there is line width. And in the next one, transparency. If you were to use, for example, hatches or solid areas that may cover something, but you would prefer that they overlap each other a little, the next column is in the clear color style for printing and information, whether a given layer will be printed or not. Layers are there to make it easier for you to draw. Therefore, if you would not divide the drawing into layers, later you will have a problem with adjusting the thickness or the type of the lines. If you split the drawing into layers from the beginning, it'll be easier for you to modify it later. Turn elements on and off if you don't need them. For example, here, I have a main drawing right in the middle and I turn off the auxiliary elements. I can't see them anymore, but they remain in the document. So managing layer makes it easier to draw in the program. And sometimes it may be that something strange starts to happen in your project. It behaves strangely or you get the project that you cannot open. Then it is a good idea to check what's going on with the document. Select the program icon, then drawing utilities. Here you have the options for auditing or rather testing the document. The program will check for any errors here. If you are checking for errors, I suggest that it should be automatically marked as yes right here, which means that if the program finds any bugs, it will automatically fix them. There was nothing in this document, but if you are worried about anything in your project, check it using this audit option. Another helpful option is the recover option. This is an option that will examine and test your document even deeper. Importantly, this option works while opening a file. So if such a document works very strangely or you can't open it, Instead of the standard opening or double clicking option, you open the program using the recover option. The program will check this drawing, redraw it and fix those errors which make the program slow down or when you cannot open this document at all. Another option is purge. This is an option that will remove from the document unused layers or elements. So it will clean the drawing for you, which will also reduce its volume. The next helpful option is overkill. This option uh, will remove overlapping elements either from a section or completely from the whole project. This is a very good option to check the document if you have a lot of elements and the project is already quite large. Such cleaning up and deleting duplicates is very useful. Please remember that all these options, which are so useful, are under the program icon. Drawing Utilities, Audit, Recover, Purge, and Overkill. Whew. Okay, I think that we will end today's presentation in which I've already discussed the most important information about the program interface and how to start working with Intersoft and Telecad. During the next presentations, I'll discuss the method of drawing, so the basic elements for drawing. So I encourage you to watch those as well. Thank you so much, Richard. That was awesome. And if you consider the price of this amazing tool, I mean, um, it doesn't get any better. So this is the IntelliCAD 2022 uh, product page uh, on novage.com.
you can just uh, visit our page at Ducart or talk to an expert. We're always on the phone. And um, I want to remind everybody that this webinar has been recorded. And if you have any question or comment, you can Mm, it's better if you uh, type them under the webinar recording and the entire IntelliCAD team will be there to answer you. So Novage is the um, best way to buy design software online because of the selection, because of the help we give with prorated licenses and crazy combinations of uh, plugins and um, tools. So give us a call or check us out at novage.com. Thanks again, everybody. And thank you uh, to the Intelica team from Arcadia Soft and have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye, everybody.